Hello, this is a video all about the EQ that comes with Pro Tools. It's a seven band EQ, and the information here really applies to most EQs of this type. Okay, so we've just got one audio track here. Let's have a listen. Oh, oh, oh. I've got the full moon on my side, and there's a wishing well in the sky. Okay, so that's completely dry at the moment. So this could be a recording you just made, microphone through your interface, and you've got the audio into your system ready to mix. So the first, one of the first things and one of the main things people reach for is, a, is an EQ, and that's taking the sound and, and really shaping it and molding it to how you, how you want the, the sort of timbre of the sound of the instrument to sound. So what we've got here is fundamentally we've got five points at which we can boost and cut and manipulate the frequency across the whole spectrum. We've also got at the top and the bottom um, two more means of adjustment, a high pass and a low pass. So the high pass allows the high frequencies to pass, hence the name. So let me show you that to start off with. If I turn that on like I just did there, and I'm going to adjust this to make this, I'll explain this a little more in, in detail in a minute. What I'm doing is I'm cutting the frequency at this point. You can see that little dot there. I'm cutting the frequency away. So I'm simply removing it. So let's have a listen to what that sounds like. So as I turn it to the left, the frequency returns. So you can see how the frequency starts low down here and goes across to 20k up here, which is the absolute maximum of human hearing. I don't think you can even hear that high. So that's the bottom and the low pass is the opposite. That cuts everything above the specific frequency. So let me take that out and I'll demonstrate that. Oh, oh, I've got the full moon on my side. Okay, so that's quite handy. So I'm going to take both of those out. Those are, you know, the first thing you might reach for is the high pass in a vocal to get rid of some of the, the muddiness below a certain frequency. You're very, very unlikely to hear any vocal elements below really 50 to 80 hertz. So just for tidiness sake in the mix, it's a good idea to stick a high pass on there and remove those sort of rumbles and, and you might have you might be able to remove things like if the singer knocked the microphone or the floor was rumbling or something. But it's not for that specific purpose. It's mainly just to clean up the recording. So the kick drums and the bass drums and you know other parts of the, the mix will, will live down there. They're not going to be interfered with by the vocal. All right, but the main meat of the plug-in here are these five bands across here. Now, this is fairly simple. Um, just if you get confused, maybe replay this section. But fundamentally, it's quite simple. You've got five points across the spectrum here. You can see them. They're colored with the little balls there. And you can boost or cut these parts. So let me take the middle there. I'm boosting it and I'm cutting it. And let me demonstrate what that sounds like. Oh, oh, oh. I've got the full moon on my side And there's a wishing well in the sky Oh my So different parts of the spectrum are being boosted and cut. And this is the beauty of the parametric EQ, is that you can move this dial here and adjust which parts of the spectrum you're working with. So it defaulted to around 2 kilohertz there. And I'm boosting and cutting that. But that might, be not the, that might not be the, the area you want to play with. So you can turn it up. You can make it 3 kilohertz there and, and, and mess with that, depending on the so many factors why you would want to boost or cut certain frequencies. Let's not get into that today. 
But you can be really almost infinitely um, precise with how you manipulate this. Now the third control, let me turn this up so you can see, is what's called the cue. Now this, if you see here, this is affecting a large sort of swathe of the frequency spectrum. And the center point here is obviously that's the sort of the peak of what it's affecting by our adjustment down here with the gain, but everything around it is being affected. Now if you don't want such an extreme effect to everything around that spectrum, you can narrow the cue. And look here, look, we're just picking out that one point at three kilohertz there that we're boosting. Now that's quite extreme. But what's good about this is you can really pinpoint certain frequencies that might be really affecting the mix. There might be some kind of quality in the vocal that just does not sound good. It might be nasally or boxy, or there might be a, a certain sound that the singer makes, a sort of mouth noise that's just really irritating you when you hear it. And a good way of finding that is to boost a really tight cue like that. Boost it up nice and hard. And then let's maybe widen it a little bit. And then search around for that really irritating sound. So let me do this. Oh, oh, oh. I've got the full moon on my side. And there's a wishing well in the sky. Oh my, clouds of dust and sp So there's a slightly nasally quality there. That I mean, it's a pretty good vocal performance. I'm being a bit picky here, but that point there, there's a little bit of nasally quality. It's like super annoying because I've exaggerated it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that down and just notch that out a little bit. You don't have to be extreme. These things have a cumulative effect. So if you find that slightly irritating thing, just, just drop it down a little bit. When you're first playing with EQs, you'll find you make big drastic motions and have just so you can hear the effects. And the more you get used to using these, the, the, the more subtle you'll be with the controls and you'll be a better mixer for it. That's not to say sometimes you need drastic action, but vast majority of the time you're gonna have small adjustments. So that's the cue, the frequency that you're choosing, and then how much you're affecting it. The only other two or three other main areas in this EQ are the input and output, and it's very important to make sure you're not overloading either the input or the output um, with any plugin, um, and this is no exception. You might get some phantom distortion, and you can't work out why you're getting distortion um, in your mix, and you'll go through everything, everything all on the faders is, is good, and the meters look good, and you know you didn't record it too hot, but it might simply be distorting in and out of a plugin. So that's a good place to look if you can't find any reason why your track is distorting. And then the final thing is this button here, which is the phase reversal switch. And this comes down to tracking. I'm not going to get into phase right now, but if you're, you're playing multiple uh, tracks at the same time and you're listening back, say, on a drum kit, and this is a kick drum, that's quite a common uh, scenario for this, um, the kick just, the bass is disappearing. When you solo it, it sounds fine, but then in the mix it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't sound great. It just sounds weak and thin and bad. Have a flick backwards and forwards with this phase button. Now this is literally flipping the the image, well it's not actually the image, it's the actual waveform itself, it's flipping it by different degrees. This I think is 180 degrees out of phase. And that could bring back a lot of those, um, the harmonic content that is being lost when it's phasing itself, phase cancelling itself. So that's a little bit complicated you may want to look into that a bit more i probably didn't explain that very well or <laughs> even very accurately so you can look at phase and phase relationships and do a wikipedia or google search find out more about that but uh, fundamentally i mean you can just switch it on and switch it off and, and find out whether it sounds better or worse you know so those are the main areas of the eq so have a play with it and, and see what happens